Hi, everyone. Welcome back into the studio. We're going to continue. I think this is the last one of the 12 uh, wildflower challenges. Don't worry, we're going to do more. We're going to continue on painting more. Um, and I'm going to, I release on an average of one to two videos a week on all different kinds of varieties as a subject here on our channel. And so if you don't want to miss that, hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss anything that we're coming out with. Uh, you can always go over and check us out on our Jansen Art our, our uh, studio website, jansenartstudio.com website, and hit the free videos there, and all of our current videos are uploaded on there as well, so you can find that. So we appreciate it. We appreciate your likes, your comments, and of course, your subscription to the video. It helps us with our videos. Okay, so I want to fulfill one of the uh, requests that I had for painting some violets uh, during this uh, wildflower challenge. I read all of your comments and I try to uh, try to answer some of those and like I, like I said before in the last couple of months, we still have glass vases and more peonies and stuff coming. So I've, we have them on note and we have a filming schedule there and we're going to get to them, okay? I promise. All right, so I same board that I have, an 8x10 a hard board. I took a little yellow, a little white and a tiny touch of black and made this color and uh, just base coated it lightly we're going to do some violets some violet colors i do love that little light color of the blue but i'm going to go very light i think behind it this time so i'm going to take a touch of phthalo blue let's go through the colors just same colors i have been using the entire time your hansa yellow dye light yellow yellow oxide uh, naphthol red light uh, burnt sienna pine green phthalo blue red violet quinacridone violet and white and so I try to use the same colors all the way through so those of you that are painting along with me on that a challenge you can get them and you have the same colors for the entire thing I'm going to take my fusion three quarter inch brush here some uh, real light blue I think it'd be pretty back behind I like this we might even put a little darker blue maybe a streak or so out through here maybe even some violet in it if we're going to have those violet colors see i love impressionism um uh, you know not the real super wild impressionism but i love to paint with the with the really impressionistic edge to push something down like that that is very impressionistic and uh, you know, for so many years, I painted absolute structured. I was so structured in everything that I painted, and it it's taken me many years to get to the the lighter, uh, more airy kind of colors that I like to do now. Let's. Um, I see that bit of violet in there. Let's let's just bring that back out just a touch more. And maybe, you know, sometimes I create these backgrounds and I just hate covering them up when I go to, you know, put on all my flowers and stuff. And sometimes I love the background so much I feel like I should just varnish them and frame them like they are. Okay, so anyway, let's get into our violets. I have some reference photos of some violets. I want to put some small white flowers with them. You can go out there and just put violets out anywhere and, and, and find them. Um, I want to do them as a as a real light kind of a red violet here red violet to blue violet so I'm going to take some phthalo blue some quinacridone violet which is the softer of your two violets and let's take a look at that see we can build over to one side to a, a beautiful blue violet all the way over to a red violet as we uh, start to paint some of these things I'm going to use a this is my number six fusion filbert since the violets have a lot of when you look at them have a lot of rounded little petals you know their petals are rounded um, I like to use something that helps you know generate that pretty easy and that's usually the little filbert I use the flat a lot when I want some angles to it some uh, and I use the filbert a lot when I want to uh, to have a roundness to them. So I'm going to start out with kind of a darker color here. I'm just going to uh, kind of sketch in and I'll take a look at those violets that are up there and kind of sketch in an idea of where I want these petals. I want to keep them a little smaller here because and because violets are, A, they're smaller, but your flowers, if you're freehand painting like this, your flowers tend to grow. If you're like me, they tend to grow and get bigger and bigger as you paint them multiple times. So, And I'm going to put multiple colors into these as I paint these. Let's do the big forward petal here, down like that. So 
and we can do maybe a little angled petal off like that. That would be a pretty shape for a violet here. Let's go up and do another shape. Turn them, turn them, pitch them off into different angles. You can paint them very formal, overlapping each other. There's just a thousand ways, which makes it all fun. A thousand ways you can paint the violets here and uh, you know, paint little sets of them. Let's put a petal right out in here and drop one out kind of out at that angle there. That's kind of pretty. And I, you know, one good thing or one thing that you should always consider as you're painting something like this is taking some of your, your violets and turning them into different positions. So like here, we might see the back part. One, let's put a little more blue, maybe a darker color into that one. So we'll see the back part of one that's going to be turned. So you don't always, you know, see them the, the, the same at the same angles and stuff. And, you know, for the longest time, what I, I used to paint so stiff and I would paint at the same angles. And so I started to uh, practice what I called rocking and rolling flowers, putting them in all different kinds of little angles and stuff. And it takes practice like everything. It takes practice, you know. I mean, we can all do it. Don't ever say you can't do it. That's, you should never say that. We can all do it. It just takes practice. And you know what? And it's like this. You say, okay, wow, well, you're just creating that out of your head. Well, I've painted hundreds of violets. I've done it hundreds of times. I average four to five hundred paintings, completed paintings a year. And so, I mean, this is my profession. I'm a professional at it. I've done it for, I've been painting this is close to 40 years now. Um, and that's all is I have this library up here of all different kinds of things. And I pull, I pull from my library of things I've seen, things I've studied and all that kind of stuff. When you're starting out, don't get frustrated that, oh, I can't do it. Well, your, your library is very small. You have to increase it with different types of techniques, different types of designs, different types of, of ways that you put things together and flowers and paintings. And, as soon, and that only comes from painting. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. You know, and some, some people can, if you paint, say, once a month, for someone to say, I've been painting 20 years, but you're only painting once a month. Okay, somebody can bypass you up in one year if they're painting every day or, or three or so, three or four times a week. You know, they'll bypass you. So I don't do it really as much as how much or how long you've painted. It's how much do you paint. And that's all, you know, really is. So here's some pretty little violets. Let's drop down. Um, maybe put a... A darker one let's go even darker so we'll put a, a touch of a light source a little more blue a little bit of red violet let's go a, a bit darker let's see down to this side let's turn one down here like this this would be kind of cool just turn these couple of little petals down maybe the bigger petal right out here out to this side there like that and let's just splash in I know that looks kind of strange, but you just splash it in because we're going to, you know me, I like impressionism. And so I'll paint these kind of impressionistic. Now, that's that color. Let's move that color. Let's touch that color through into a couple of other places on these other violets. Maybe even a little more red violet here as I get into some of these. Push that color in a bit. Travel the color. You're an artist. We move color. We move color. Let's put a little more red violet in there. Okay. Now, I also want to do some kind of white little flowers with this. White, maybe yellow. Complement to the... I always look to the complements. You know, for many years when I was a decorative painter, I never used color schemes. And today I look to complements, I think, more than anything else, which is like a complementary color scheme. I don't always follow it, you know, directly, uh, but I use a lot of color theory in what I do. Um, and uh, so if I'm looking for a color, I'm not sure what kind of color to go to, go to a complement. I'm going to a softer yellow and pushing my violet out here, adding slowly amounts of yellow till I start to get this gray. Because violet and yellow will make beautiful, nice, warm grays. 
and let's put in a kind of a yellowish little light flower back here just a little just a little light blossom I think maybe one back out in here maybe it's gonna come out and turn right down in there don't know exactly yet I want to paint this so I got a nice little formal area maybe some that turn out here like that with that one drops down turns that we'll darken it down a bit here pull some just light colors out here just some pretty lights and uh, turn some of these little guys down let them fall down we'll pick up a bit more white now what I'll do is I'll push more yellow into those in just a minute as soon as that dries up a bit I don't like to paint with it I like to paint tones I don't like to paint with it while it's too wet because it blends too much I'm not a blender I'm a I'm a tone painter and uh, so I mix and paint tones I don't like to uh, blend them up too much okay but while that's setting up the center let's take this center color of this light color and let's put the little light center in on these little violets coming out here and we'll do it very casually so we'll pop a little bit of the light just pulling out using just a chisel of this little six and like I've said before some of you've heard me a thousand times and you and we need to hear it quite a bit I use as large a brush as I can fit into an area when I paint something because that gives you the most casual look to it let's darken down some of this white for this one out here and push that one in just a bit into that okay I'm going to get myself a fresh paper towel I always always am wiping my paper towel like this to wiping my brush and setting up you know the the uh, nice uh, clean edge trying to find the edge sometimes on my brush by pinching it like that and finding the edge of my brush if I need to like that okay let's go back let's find some of these nice here's some of the beautiful light colors and when you're you know when you're painting try to get your colors all modeled up here like this so you can get some variations as you start to add we'll work some of these petals here we'll do them darks and lights work some of these petals will add just little touches of light color into some of these here as well start pushing color pushing color maybe even a bit of a lighter or different blue into the little violet is kind of pretty you know you play the you know the uh, the colors of it so say if you had a violet you'd play red violets to blue violets and then if you wanted to more interest into those flowers you would expand again out to your blues and reds and for the ultimate contrast you'd add any of your yellows into that like into the little centers and stuff that these violets will have because the yellows will give you your uh, complementary contrast color theory and uh, color theory is extremely important a lot of people always ask me you know if you wanted to study to get better at something what would you study and I always say color theory color theory is the most important thing because it, it tells you what colors you need to do okay so I'm going to take a little pine green I'm going to cool it down with a little bit of my violet that I had here let's go right into here and let's push in some not only some contrast I'll do a little bit of negative painting here but let's use this to give ourselves some uh, little stems and I'll pull and break the angles of those a bit there let's get some little stems to little flowers here but this is a nice cool dark color that creates the contrast the formal area of my painting here that I want these little violets to come off of and uh, let's just take this right up in here and let's warm some of that up pine green a little bit of yellow maybe lighten it up with a bit of white always changing varying your colors let's warm that just a bit keep this nice full area of the beautiful colors right there in the center 
filling it up, filling up the center that keeps it nice and full and what we call formal. And then we can take some of this out a little darker here, draw a few little lines out, some motion out away from our composition to loosen it up, lighten it up. Let's get, and but I like to vary my greens. That's one thing that I'd say, you know, you can tell a, a beginner artist a lot because they'll do a lot of the same green. And I did that for years and years and years. It was just a habit of mine. And it's a habit of a lot of beginning artists. And you can, you know, you think about it. The greens, the leaves are everywhere in your composition. And so, you know, you should be varying them quite a bit. So I'm just going to loosen this all up. You can do more of a you know, specific violet leaves. Like these are real light and thin. Um, some of the other samples I have are, are, are heavier. You know, there's all different kinds of varieties. We can uh, put in with the chisel here a little, a few looks of some stems and stuff down. Little, little marks. I love the little marks because these little these little marks just add so much to your painting and lightening it up and uh, getting some of that interest. Let's take a little green and a little blue, a little violet color. Deepen some of that again. You can see that color coming off in here. Push in some of that dark. Rebuild, you know, we got to build these white flowers and, and everything, but you just build it slowly. You come around and build it and build it. And you know, and a lot of times when you're um, when you're painting something like this, and I'll be very honest with you, you go through it and you go, you go through as if when you're a creator and you're creating your own things, you go through this. Uh, it's kind of like an up and down cycle of creativity, and all of a sudden you start to get this good feeling. Wow, this is really working. And then you put something else on, and it maybe takes a little bit of that away. Then you start thinking. Oh no, this isn't so great. Maybe I should take it all off. And I'm going to advise you to fight through that feeling and keep going because that good feeling of this is pretty awesome will come back if you just kind of keep following the rules, following the techniques. Don't give up. There's I go through that all the time. It's kind of like a it's this this process of creativity is not a straight line from just beautiful to the finished product. No, you go highs and lows all the way through it as you trying things and putting them on and some of them don't work, some of them do work. But don't give up. Just keep pushing forward and the completed piece will hopefully work, okay? So, you know, you keep going. So, you know, there's things that I'll fight like right now is like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm losing some of my center violets in here. And, you know, I lost some of my center here going on. Now, you haven't lost anything. I can toss in more paint. I can toss in more colors. I haven't lost anything in there yet. But the feeling is, yeah, maybe I have and, you know, maybe I should just give up and take it, take this off. No, don't do that. Don't do that. I hope you under, kind of understand what I'm saying. Is what we need is more colors, more things going on in here. Let's let's juice up the violets with some more stuff here. You know, more work, more of our colors, more textures, more color into them. Start start working them and adding a little bit more color interest into them. They got they carry all kinds of streaks and beautiful colors. Let's get some light. If we're working against that dark, let's get a little bit of light coming in on them, okay? Let's get a bit more of our white right up in here to create the contrast up into the center part of that little violet right there. And let's push in a little bit of that white. Um, yeah, and let's uh, take some of this light, maybe some of this blue. I like to carry these colors. Let's just pop in. First, that might be a bit light here. And so I'll just streak through it here with a bit of my darker color. Push that through, get some of those other little colors. So the thing is, like you think, okay, maybe I lost my center design. Oh, I'm gonna take it off. No, just keep pounding through to this, creating colors, creating the interest of it. Don't 
Don't give up on your design, your concept right away. Just keep building it, changing it, adding other colors. Now you see all these colors that are coming through the violets that I did there earlier. Could I pop up that center? You start thinking about, is that the white? This is kind of my center of interest little violet here. Is that the white of it there? Is that white enough? I mean, look at how white contrast is into that one there. Do I have that yet? Maybe I need to just touch in a little heavier white to really bring that out. Maybe I need to take a bit of the blue right in here and put a bit of blue right in there with, against that other violet color. I'm starting to play my color theory. And what I know from color theory, my contrast, expanding it out uh, here, the amount of colors I'm using, um, going maybe more to a, a uh, an analogous you know type of color usage and so I'm I'm trying I'm running through some rules and trying some different things let's put a bit of that blue back there right there let's put an edge we use that petal edging technique you know if I want to pop this edge of this petal out a little bit more let's use that petal edging technique let's get the pretty violet colors and blues back into this back one back here let's take the bit of the edge maybe draw just a bit of that edge on the back side of that one there like that maybe just a bit of that light back here you know maybe a touch i haven't used the red violet here or the quinacridone violet in a bit let's put a touch of that into that that part of those little petals there maybe a bit of darker blue and some red violet make a nice contrasting violet color that can also be added to one side of this one paint some of that light out a bit creating a bit more contrast so you I, I start running rules I start running techniques and rules and you never give up on it you just keep going we want to leave this one mostly dark, but we can put a bit more light into it here. Some of those colors, a little bit lighter in that gray, just a bit more. If I lighten up the center, I can lighten up this other part of this one as well. Here. I'll put another little stroke of the light here back through. Push that in. I, I like to push to incorporate colors, not to blend them. I just push them once or twice just to get them to the colors to move through each other to almost like what I call marbleize. They don't mix. They don't blend. They kind of swirl together there. And uh, so we'll put a bit of that through. Build this up, especially your center of interest right in there like that. Build that up. Um, get those light streaks. Those are pretty little. Let's put some light streaks. A little bit more blue here. Let those streak light and dark and different colors. Let's, let's get this a little darker over here. So we have a light and dark to that, that one right there. Maybe a bit more light coming out here. And uh, this one that's kind of turned here, we can put maybe just a touch of light right in there. It doesn't need very much. You know, it's just a little guy sitting up there. We might put a light, a lighter little touch of violet right up here onto one side to give it more of a highlight. You can even go almost to a, a white of an edge. Give them a light edge. Sometimes, you know, if you're creating and you're feeling that your flowers are getting lost or something or they need more structure, go to the petal edging technique where you take that light color, you run it on one corner of the brush and start detailing out your petals a, a bit more to where you can see them, where you can find them. And that might make you a, a bit happier. Until you get, you know, to more of an impressionist, See, I'll let some of that go. I, I used to do a lot of that type of detailing. I don't do as much anymore, but sometimes when I start to get a little lost, yeah, I'll go in and, and do some of that. Let's put in some lighter, 
lighter greens. And we'll go, we'll go haunts of yellow, pine green, a little white, some yellow oxide to help gray it down. Multiple colors, we'll lighten it up. Let's put some lighter green touches into some of these little violets here. And um, we'll have to straighten out our white flowers here pretty soon. But let's just get a bit more of a yellow green in here. A pretty little yellow green going on. Maybe right up in here a little bit of that. Get some of those. And you know on these violets you can always go, like I say, if you feel like it's real heavy like blue or so, you can always just push in some quinacridone violet itself into these. It, it just looks great. Here's the little bottom petal of that one. Let's push a little blue, a little violet. And you work it. You keep working it. And that's what that's what I do. You know, there are many times inside, you know, my my thoughts inside, like, oh, I've I've kind of lost this one. But I keep working it through. Now let's put a, a bit of shadow right around the center here of these, which will help us give a spot here for our nice light centers. Nice light little centers that's gonna go in. A little darker down here. Pretty little violet. Let's, now see, over here, I've, I've it's right in my center of interest and they're kind of lost. So I'll go back to that petal edging technique. Let's, let's even go even more. There's a lot of real heavy purple. Let's go more towards our Let's move around the wheel just a little bit more to the uh, red violet side and push that in and see if I can direct that petal here with a bit more red violet. And if it doesn't work, I'll just put the blue back. That's easy. We'll push that in and um, that steps it out a bit. Let's go more of the light, go more on the edge here and set that in right there on that edge and give a, a prettier little edge. And so, and you can see, everyone can see now that you can clearly see those little petals there. Let's go more of a light blue edge on this side again. Build this up a bit here, just a touch more. Maybe a bit more of a darker streak right there in the center. See how it builds it up? and the little violets start to come alive. And you're just building up, edging the, edging the petals so you can see them a little clearer, edging, drawing them around, and starting to see a little bit more of those, those petals there. Let's take some of this yellow, maybe a bit of that violet, but some yellow, maybe a bit of green in there just to and let's push that right into my white flowers here for a second and we'll restate these white flowers. But I'm pushing this yellow. Now, why would you do this yellow? Because it's a complement to some of the violets that we're doing and it'll look great as a, as a deeper color down there. Let's um, just push some of that in this whole area here and let's restate some light. Now I can, I'm just gonna come over here with that dirty color in my brush and then start loading in heavier on one side, some more white. So I got a heavier, clearer white to one side that allow me to have a, a light side and a, and a softer side to this light color here. And uh, let's just push in some soft sideways little petals there. Let's hit a little more light right out here onto this one. Here like that, keep that nice and loose color, that brushwork, keep your calligraphy really light, airy, and loose. Let's put a little bit more here, right out like that. Maybe pull out this side here so it gets a little bit lost here. So that, and maybe a bit more power right here on this side because it's pointing to my center violets and so that would help support the center of my violets there. We'll do that. And let's turn this one down. We'll put a couple of them sideways across here 
see how that's gonna yeah see sometimes I'll see that line now I'll put that line in and see how it works before I go spend a bunch of time to tone this down a bit to put some petals in there to see if that angle is gonna work and I always try to do something a little different I love these small paintings because I don't put too much emphasis as an artist. I don't put too much emphasis on them. In other words, or well, let me say this. I don't put too much importance on them. They're fun little paintings. And if you put too much importance on it and the whole design starts going south on you like it's not really working, oh, that's, that's just a horrible feeling. Okay, so don't put that much importance on it. It's a little 8 by 10 piece of wood with a few colors. Um, and try some things. And you go, you know, that's how you learn. But if you're getting frustrated with it, it's because you're probably putting too much importance on it. These are just fun little things. These aren't going to go hang in the Louvre. And, uh, you know, they're just fun little paintings. I'm going to put this blue petal right up over that white one right there bring this one forward see I'm still working the edges of these so don't put so much don't put so much into it you know don't put that much importance into it and uh, so many of you you know write oh I wish I could do it more like you and paint more like you and and uh, and the thing is you can and they will all be different. That's the beautiful thing about impressionism and painting like this. We're all a little different. See all those little marks? See, just the little marks. If you start leaving the little marks, you get more interest, more little lines to see, more things to see. You just keep building it. Um, we're all different, right? We should all be different, and we should always paint different. I'm going to take a little burnt sienna and a little red violet tap that around right down here this is in reason this is a cool color a little bit of darker color uh, that's going to create some contrast to the center of these little light blossoms which is what I want just a little bit of contrast I watch the contrast against my center flower which is my violets right and uh, then we'll take a bit of uh, yellow oxide and some Hansa yellow we've done this before I load it in. Sometimes I go yellow oxide first and then Hansa yellow. Sometimes I model them together like this. Tap it a little heavier to one side and then just a little bit to the lower side. So I'll tap it here on the side that I want the viewer to go to the violets there. So I'll tap that through. And then so it's a little heavier in the Hansa color the lighter brighter yellow on that side and then I'll pick up a little softer yellow oxide for the other side right there and if I want some more interest to it I will take Hansa with a tiny touch of white here just kind of model those together and touch a little bit lighter smaller called the law of disproportionate color the lighter you get the smaller you get and you know, for all of you that are, that there are good rules for artists to use for everything. And there's so many, you can't always remember them. And that's why you need to have a bunch of friends you paint with sometimes and have other people look at your paintings. And because there's so many rules and so many different looks and somebody will say, well, you know what, you're supposed to go lighter and smaller. Yours isn't smaller. Maybe you need to just take that highlight down a little bit and then your painting falls back into line. Sometimes we lose what's called losing perspective for your painting. It happens to all of us. We get working on one little area and then all of a sudden all, all we see is that one little area. And it's called your perspective, the perspective on your painting. And all of us will lose that. And it's nice to have a, a buddy that you can show it to that says, no, you lost it there, you need to... And then you start running through all of the little rules. Now I'm taking the Hansa and the white here and just adding a bit. Now the tiny touch of and the ones that I have here, they have a tiny touch of like an orange next to that that's kind of pretty here. And so I'm going to just take a little bit of orange, a nice... Boy, that didn't come off very much orange there. Just a bit of that orange. I like that on that side. 
there a bit. That's pretty good. So you have that, you know, there now. You can look at restating. Let's go, yeah, let's go with uh, red, violet, and pine green here. Nice dark. Let's restate some contrast right up next to some of these areas here and see if we can pull out the, the violets just a touch more. And I can use negative painting, which means I can use it to clean up the edge of that little violet there. We'll toss that right into that rose. I mean, not rose, but that little white blossom. We'll clean up that edge right there like that with that little violet. See how it pops that off? So the violets, you know, that were lost a little earlier, slowly, slowly, we've worked them. We've worked the backgrounds. We've worked the, the foreground colors, the edges of the petals. We've used our rules of contrast to start bringing them back up. And all of a sudden, we have a nice little center of interest here that's coming with some of the the pretty little violets and let's uh i always as i start to come to the end of the painting i always like to uh you know go back and work and restate right around my center of interest and edges and stuff a bit more work those in get a little bit of that nice color working there here a little red violet and blue and uh if you want to develop that edge a bit more, a touch of the light right on that edge there, pull that in. Maybe a, uh, sometimes I'll just like pull across. Sometimes I'll divide this up into two little petals. Sometimes I'll just pull a little bit of that to give an extra little bumpy kind of interest, you know. And I'll look at something like that. You'll look at, oh, that has a nice little bumpy, not smooth all the way around. And so maybe you you take that influence and you come out here and you just go, you know, you bumpy it out a little bit. You break that super round that it's that your flower may have. You look at the ideas. And sometimes it just doesn't work. And But hopefully you can stay with it. Hang in there. Stay with it until you start to develop it a little bit more and a little bit more. And again and again and again, a beautiful flower is painted multiple times. You don't get a beautiful flower painting it just once. And you, you paint it multiple times and restate it and do it again and work the colors. And if you can always leave a little bit, always leave a little bit of what you did before underneath, that's when the flower gets the prettiest. There. So now you can see the violets coming to life. If I have this real white here, I could bring that back up. How would you bring that back up? Look for your contrast, your your forward colors. And this is something like when I was a beginner, I used to always think, okay, light colors advance, dark colors recede. First thing I learned in color theory. No, that's not true. Because if this light is into the background, the dark color, a darker color will come up in front of it. And so these are little violets. They don't have to be light color. They can be darker color. And the darker you start to make that that little petal there, then let's go more violet, a little more violet color. The darker I start to push that right in there against that white, the more it starts to come forward. Do you see that? It's contrast. It's good rules of contrast. So sometimes, yeah, the little light edge is right there, but that little light edge is sitting next to that darker green. Over here on this side, let's push this petal right up in front of that white, and we'll do it with dark. We'll give that just a bit of dark, and all of a sudden that petal comes right up in front of it again, see? Now we can clean up. Let's clean up the... Uh, I'll start to look to clean up a bit. You know, um, we'll also have to, I don't want to forget, we also have to uh, do harmony. So we'll clean up here, clean up some edges here, which will bring those right forward again there. And I hit that yellow. So I'll just add, take that, an opportunity to add a little more contrast to that with some burnt sienna, and then I'll tap a little more yellow in there. And that looks that looks okay. Could have a touch more 
heavier light white right up here pointing towards that center one right there okay now harmony what is harmony harmony is colors or your composition relating together it's something again we study in color theory a lot harmonious compositions how do you get harmonious compositions there's eight ways to do it one of the ways in which to do it is to carry color you take your main subject color and you move it through your design so my main subject color here of course is my violets I'm gonna take maybe this kind of a reddish um, a red violet color which I said we wanted to move and it's a nice beautiful cool violet to red violet we'll take it up to a medium value so it's pretty close to, to that if you ever in doubt we go to a medium value Round the value five or six, always have your value scale here, round in there, which is right where I'm at, okay? And you move it, you push that through, touch that into some of your other, especially these white flowers. See how pretty that is, pulling that color down here now towards these flowers. How do you touch it right back down in here? Make some of that white you know, disappear right out into, into that light. Now we can restate the light, but uh, some of these accent colors look pretty. And then, you know, you can put them into leaves. You can put them into strokes coming out. Sometimes I'll take a little bit of contrast with it, a lighter stroke, and add a few little marks of that through the painting. You know, just get some movement there through to the painting. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this blue, I think, up on top of that one because this is supposed to be about the violets. And you know, who, did, who, who didn't who did tell me I forgot the center on that one there? I forgot that little center there. We'll just leave that one kind of casual. But see that violet color comes around here, you know, up into here. I might add just a touch or two or some movement of that color. I like to do that. Let's just move a, a little bit more of our lights here around through this part of the painting there that's kind of neat and uh, maybe this toned white back through here create some other just optical just carry the color just create the, the casual nature there of it bit of the of the green here boom just a touch. This is pine green all by itself, so it's a different green than I've used before. Just going to tap this through, create a few little movements of this green. It's kind of a different green here. And that just adds a bit more to it. Now, you can pop out the center of your violets a, a bit more if you want. You can go to a lighter color, a petal edging technique, like I would look, I'd take this kind of violet that I was working with right here, toss some more white right up onto the edge of this, roll over onto the edge of this right here like that, put on that light edge that really causes that little violet right there to, to uh, pop up uh, above that other slightly darker one. But overall, that's a little bit too light. So what you do is you go back and paint it into position. And, you know, you've seen me do this on landscapes and everything else. I usually paint my lights back into position with my dark so I can leave just that little edge and pop that little edge a little bit more. And I'll play back and forth a bit here until I find the right amount of light that I kind of want to leave there onto the tip of that flower there. Just like that. That's probably enough. And... Uh, Maybe pop this one up a bit more and let's work that violet right up against the edge of it there and leave that little bit there. And so you have some pretty, pretty little violets and you're building them and building them like that. And that's a fun way to do it. You could go splash some other colors out into the background. You can do whatever. But, you know, one of the things I want to leave you with as we're leaving, working through this series and we're doing this, and I'm listening to a lot of your comments and a lot of this thing. The greatest advice I can give to you is what I said earlier during this painting. We go through highs and lows. Just keep pushing through it. 
Don't give up on it. Don't get yourself down into a depressed mode about your about what you're creating because it can come back and then it can drop back down again and then it can come back. Okay, just keep following your rules, keep following your rules of contrast, keep following your edges, keep building your color, keep going through it. If there's a problem, just slow down. I always, if I'm building something and it's like, um, you know, super important, I always will stop, go get myself a cup of coffee, sit back and look at it for a little bit and start running through my mind. All the rules that I know that I and that I generate. Sometimes you make a a list of them and you hang the list down to it and then you start looking through here. Okay, you know value contrast. Look at your lights and darks. Are your lights and darks you know perfectly placed? Harmony. What what are some of the different ways that you can create harmony in there? If something's bothering you, some of the harmony is off. Don't give up on your paintings. Start running through the rules, okay? That's how we create. That's what artists do to create. We don't get frustrated with it. We'll all get frustrated with it, but I won't, I won't give up on it, you know, and, uh, um, you know, I keep kind of pushing through it and, and, you know, working through those rules. And when you're dealing with a light painting like this, don't put that much importance on it. Then it becomes more, what do I say, more relaxed, Okay. If you start putting a lot of importance on it, then you start stiffening up and then a little thing off becomes a very big problem because there's too much importance on the painting. It's a board. It's a little bit of paint. We can go get another one if we need to. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining me on this series. We have a lot more to do and we're going to continue to do and continue to watch the channel because we'll, we'll put in to at least two videos a, a week. We uh, run here on all different kinds of stuff. Those of you who are continuing on, we are, you know, we're going to be painting the golden retriever portrait. We're going into animal portraits and glass and other things. Lots of fun things, okay? Thanks for joining me, guys. And uh, like I say, if you have any kinds of comments or anything, hit them right down there. Questions, things you want to see, and we'll try to get to them, all right? Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I'll see you later.